Hello guys, welcome to today's video. This one is going to be going over things that you should be doing at home while you're practicing. Little things that will make you a better dart player at home and will improve your game for when we're out of quarantine or whenever you go into the pub and you play against real people and you play seriously. So, let's get into this. So for me, an important thing is to make sure that your board is a good board and to make sure that it's well lit. So for me, I use this Target uh, Corona light, which is pretty ironic for the situation that we're in. But these lights are really good just because you don't have to mount them to the ceiling or the wall or anything like that. And you don't have to worry too much um, about having to drill holes where you don't want to drill holes. Really, really good. Obviously, the board has got to have some holes in the holes in the wall, but I prefer having this sort of light at home uh, and I really like it. I didn't really like the light to start off with, um, but the more I use it, the better I find it. And it casts absolutely no shadows on the dart whatsoever. So it's a good system to have. So make sure that your board looks good. Make sure that you've got a good quality board. Make sure that it's well lit as well. So my next tip for you guys is to do with the darts that you're throwing. Now, these are my darts that I use. It may be quite a tempting thing right now to go ahead, try all your sets of darts, have some fun, see if you can hit 180s with this dart and 180s with that dart and doubles with this dart and doubles with that dart. It's not going to help you improve though. That's the only downside to that sort of thing. Use your normal darts when you're practicing at home. The temptation, I understand, is real to go and use something else. But if you use your own darts, you will. that's the way you're going to improve. You're not going to improve by using Phil Taylor 26 grand darts and then going to your Sean Great Bats 22 grand darts five minutes later. And it's just not helpful. It's not going to help you get any better. So tip number two, make sure you're using your own darts when you're practicing and stick to them because these are the ones you're going to get good at. So another thing you guys can do, and what I like to use, I like to use this thing here. I have a, uh, uh, a stand which I can mount my phone to, or you could just prop your phone up somewhere. Record your own throw because this is the time. This is a good time for you guys to, to perfect your throw when it comes to throwing your darts. So Make sure that you record your throw. Have a look at the throw. See what you do wrong. When it comes to throwing darts as well, there's plenty of things that I know that I do wrong. And it's a good time to try and fix them. So for me, I know for a fact that when I bring my dart back, my hand twists and my dart is now pointing in that direction, not that direction, the direction that it's supposed to be going. So that is something that I can work on. I also know, which is one thing, surprisingly, that I never actually was told, and it was only in the last few weeks that I've started streaming and doing YouTube videos and stuff that I've noticed, I have a real jerk on my throw, and I've never noticed it. And I tell everyone, you know, make sure that you're stood still when you throw, make sure that you do this when you throw, but I'm not even listening to my own advice. And it's not because I didn't, not because I'm ignoring my own advice, it's because I didn't know that I had the problem. So recording your own throw can bring out problems that no one's ever mentioned to you and bring out problems that only you're gonna notice. And if you think that is something that is gonna affect your game, then try and fix it. Because there's loads of things wrong with my throw. I have so many issues with my throw and I'm kind of to the point where I don't really care because I'm playing well with the problems now. But there's definitely things I can do to improve my throw. And recording my throw and recording me playing darts, it's only gonna help you so definitely Get yourself a camera, use your phone. I'm using my phone right now. The quality on this is pretty good. So prop it up somewhere, record your own throw because it's going to improve your game a lot and it's going to be quite important to do so. So get your throw, get your throw recorded. Even if you send it to someone who's better than you at darts, send it to someone who knows their way around a dartboard. Send it to them. Give them like, say like, look, here's, here's how I throw. What can I do to improve it? Send it to all your friends. Send it to all your darts friends. Get a little bit of advice from everyone. Take the advice that you think is going to apply to you, that you think is going to be important to you, and apply it to your game because it's going to help. I promise. It will help. Next up is to take regular breaks. Now, when you're at home, you can throw for two hours. You can throw for three straight hours. There's no problem. Take, but take your regular breaks because throwing for three hours, once you get an hour in and your arm starts to tire and you're a bit thirsty or you're a bit hungry, have a break. Even if it's half an hour, even if it's 20 minutes, have a break. That's going to improve your game. It's going to help you just get better. Throwing for the sake of throwing is not going to improve your darts match. It's not going to improve your game. You're not going to get better at darts just by throwing for the sake of throwing. You need to throw with a purpose and that's what we're going to get into now. So set yourself some tasks. If you are a dart player who hasn't had many 180s, then maybe set yourself a task. I want to hit a 180, even though I've only got two darts, in the next week. Set yourself a task. Give yourself something to go for. 
you never hit a 170. Go for 170s. For me personally, I when I was making a video, I did a video on the three bullseye challenge and I set myself the task of hitting three bullseyes. It took me over three hours, but I hit it and it was really cool. It was something that I hadn't done in a long time playing darts because I don't go for bullseyes any really, to be honest, but it was a task that I set myself and there was a lot of like self-belief and I was very proud of myself for doing it. Even though it took me forever, I did it and it was a big, big thing and I was very happy that I'd done it. So set yourself some tasks. Maybe you never hit a Shanghai, hit a Shanghai. Maybe you've never hit three double twenties, hit three double twenties. Set yourself some tasks, give yourself something to go for while you're practicing because that is going to make you a better player. Next up, we're gonna have a look at the ground for this one. So if I come over here, this is what I am using at the moment, which is making a huge difference. Ignore the mess over there, but I have a raised Oki. And the reason why I wanted a raised Oki, I've had a raised Oki for a while, but I actually didn't have it in my house. I had to go and pick it up. So I managed to get let, I managed to have someone let me in um, to go pick up the Oki from the pub. We did social distance for it, of course, because that's what we got to do. But it was something that I needed to get to improve my game. So I went and got myself my Oki back and it's now in my room and I'm now using it. Now, another reason why having an Oki is important is because before my Oki, I used to use stickers. Now, this is a little bit off. Um, don't hate me for it. If you watch the video of the uh, of the um, accessories video, you'll know why this is off about an inch. Uh, it's about an inch too close, but anyway, ignore that. I was throwing from here. This is where I was throwing from. So my foot was this side of my Oki line. I'm just using my stickers as an Oki back then. Um, but after an hour of throwing, my foot was getting closer and it was getting closer and it was getting closer and I would end up throwing this from this line. Even though I know that this is my throw arc, this is my throw line, I will start throwing from an, an inch closer. And an inch closer, although, yeah, you might be a little bit better from an inch closer. When you go back to playing pub league darts and you're used to throwing from an inch closer, it's going to mess your game up so much. Every throw is going to feel long to you for probably months as well. So... Don't do that. The reason why a raised Oki for me is good is because I know for a fact that I'm throwing from the same distance every time. I can't put my foot further than that because it won't go further than that. And I just love to have something to put my foot up against. It just, it just makes it easier. Another thing that makes it easier as well, you don't have to look down. Every time I would throw a dart, or I'd come take my darts out the board, come over here, first thing I'd do, look down, make sure my foot is on the yockey, then look up, then throw. And it was ruining my rhythm a lot. So the fact that I can take my darts out the board, kick my foot up against the yockey, not have to look, know it's in the right position, and throw was a big deal for me. So there's that. Now, this is another one as well. This will be the reason why a lot of you clicked on this video, but this is important. Now, let me get my shoe off. Shoes. Wear shoes. Make sure they're clean or your missus is going to kill you. Uh, these are relatively clean, um, but wear shoes when you practice. So many people I see in my chat when they're asking me, but I get asked a lot, do you wear shoes when you practice at home? I say, yes, always wear shoes when I practice at home. This, 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 this distance here, the sole of my shoe is probably an inch. So I am an inch taller in these than I am not. So if I was to stand with my shoes like this, and then if I was to stand with no shoes, I'd drop that much. It's not a lot, but if you've ever played darts and you know what an inch can do to your throw, that is 60. If I throw it an inch wrong, that's a one. That's a one. That's a big 20. That's a 20, that's a five, that's a treble five. An inch in darts makes such a big difference. Make sure that you are playing darts in your shoes. It will help you out when we go back to regular life and when it goes to playing in a pub or anything. If you're watching this video and we're not on quarantine anymore, still use your shoes when you're practicing at home because it is important. Make sure that you use shoes that you're gonna play when you go out as well. Uh, I wouldn't recommend, like I wouldn't use like, I wouldn't wear these slippers because they're so thin and it's basically like wearing no shoes. But then on the same same side of things, I wouldn't wear my work boots because the sole is probably like two inches big. Uh, and it's just not smart. But anyway, guys, 
Those are some of my indoor practicing at home tips and stuff. Uh, if you find this video helpful at all, then please leave a like on it, subscribe if you're brand new. Let me know in the comment section below if there are any other things that you guys do at home that you feel like some people should know. Let me know in the comment section below if I've missed anything and uh, I'll have a look at them and we'll see how smart you guys are all are. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, leave a like on it, smash the subscribe button because we're on the road to 14,000 subscribers right now. We're getting there. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.